Welcome to Electron Line. Now that we've learned how to find the impedance of a rather complicated circuit with parallel branches, let's do one more example so we can kind of solidify our methodology. And this one will be a little bit smoother because we eliminate some of the superfluous actions and we just go straight to doing the problem. So here we recognize that we're going to have an impedance through this portion of the circuit. And then we have two parallel branches, so we need to find the impedance here, we need to find the impedance of the parallel branches, and then we want to add those two together. So we're going to call this Z of the first capacitor. So we're going to find the impedance of capacitor one branch, and that is going to be equal to, now notice there's a real and an imaginary part to that. The real part will be 100 ohms for the resistor, minus j because this is a capacitor and it has an imaginary part so for c1 we need x for c1 is equal to 1 over omega times c which is equal to 1 over omega which is 10 radians per second and the c the capacitor is 1 milli uh, millifarad which is 0 0.001 that would be equal to 1 over 0 0.01, which is equal to 100. All right, so this becomes minus j times 100. Now we have to convert that into magnitude and phase angle. So this is equal to, the magnitude would be the square, let's see here. Uh, my calculator, ah, it's hiding on the blackboard or the whiteboard again. So here the impedance, we have the real imaginary part, so it would be 100 squared plus 100 squared, take the square root of that, and we get 141.4. That'd be 141.4 for the magnitude, and the phase angle is going to be a minus 45 degrees, because the real and imaginary part have the same amplitude, but we have a negative there, so minus 45 degrees for the phase angle. All right, now we're ready to attack the parallel branch. So we'll call this Z1 on the left branch, and we'll call this Z2 on the right branch. So in this case, we can say that Z for the parallel branches is equal to the product Z1, Z2 over the sum Z1 plus Z2. So for the numerator, it's okay to immediately go to the magnitude and the phase angle form. So the magnitude, let's see here, we need the x of c2 which is equal to 1 over omega c and since the size of that capacitor is the same as the capacitor here this is equal to 100. okay so in this case z1 since there's no real part that's going to be equal to an amplitude of 100 with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees because it's a capacitor now we're going to multiply the times z2 z2 comprises of a resistor and an inductor so the magnitude of Z2 is going to be equal to the square root of 200 squared plus the imaginary part, which is going to be omega times L, which is 8, times uh, the phase angle, which is 10. So this gives us uh, omega times the inductance, and we have to square that as well. So we have 200 squared plus 80 squared. So 200 squared plus 80 squared equals... Take the square root of that, that gives us 215.4. So the amplitude or the magnitude of Z2 is 215.4. That is by squaring the real and the imaginary part, add them together, take the square root. And now for the phase angle, the phase angle for branch 2 is going to be equal to the inverse tangent of the imaginary part. So the imaginary part would be 80 divided by the real part, which would be 200. So 80 divided by 200, take the inverse tangent, that gives an angle of 21.8 degrees. And it's a positive angle because there's an inductor there, so the phase angle is going to be positive. So phase angle of 21.8 degrees. In the denominator, we're not going to convert that to that format yet. So Z1, Z1. It's going to be, there's no real part, there's only imaginary part. The imaginary part is 100, so it'll be 0 minus j times 100. And then we're going to add to that this right here. So we have a real part of 200, 
and an imaginary part of plus 80, plus j times 80. So the reason why we leave it in that format first uh, initially is because it's a lot easier to add these together. So this would become equal to, in the numerator we get 100 with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees and 215.4 with a phase angle of 21.8 degrees. And in the denominator we end up with the real part of 200 and the imaginary part of minus j times 20. Now we can convert that to magnitude and angle. So this is equal to, in the numerator, we don't change anything, 100, phase angle of minus 90 degrees, with 215.4, with a phase angle of 21.8 degrees. And in the denominator, we're going to end up with 200 squared plus 20 squared. That's not going to add a lot. So you're right, that's 201. So 201 for amplitude and the phase angle, that would be 20 divided by 200. That would be uh, 0.1, negative, and the inverse tangent is minus 5.7 degrees. Minus 5.7 degrees. Okay, so we can go ahead and combine that. So this is equal to 100 multiplied times 215.4 divided by 201 with a phase angle of minus 90 degrees plus 21.8 degrees and this becomes positive when we bring it to the numerator of 5.7 degrees. So this is equal to, for the parallel branch, let's see here we have 100, 100 times 215.4 divided by 201 and we get Whoa, 107.16. 107.16 for the magnitude angle wise. We get a minus 90 plus 21.8 and plus 5.7, an angle of minus 62.5 degrees. Okay, now since we want to add that to the original impedance, and adding it's a lot easier done when it's in. But real imaginary part, let's see what that looks like. So Z total is equal to the impedance across the first capacitor plus the impedance across the parallel branch. Let me see what we got so far. So for here we have 100 minus J100. That's for the impedance across the capacitor. But this one now has to be converted to to uh, real and imaginary parts, so we take the cosine of this angle, 62.5, take the cosine of that, and multiply it times that, times 107.16, and we get 49.48. So 49.48 for the real part, and minus J times, so we take the sine of that, 62.5, take the sine, times 107.16, and we get 95.05. Now we can go ahead and add the real parts. Oop, be careful here. We're adding, we're not multiplying. So now we can add the real parts and the imaginary parts together. So Z total is equal to, for real we get 149.5 and minus J times 195.1 or 0.1 maybe, like this. And so this gives us the total impedance of that circuit. And as you can tell, if you convert everything to the amplitude and phase angle, especially when you multiply and divide, it makes the problem quite a bit easier. Although whenever you add, it's better to add when it's in the real and imaginary part format. So you kind of want to go back and forth a few times to find the right format to make it easier to go and do the calculations. But that is how it's done.